Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about three different ways you can handle the conflicts between the delimiters in Flask's Jinja and the delimiters in Vue. So the delimiters that I'm talking about are the ones for variables. So if I scroll down in the documentation here, you see the two brackets here for the delimiters. And as you know, in Jinja, you have the same bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very simple example. I'm going to walk through three ways that you can do this. So to create this example, first thing I'll do is I'll create uh, the files that I need. So I need a file to run my app. So um, new file, and I'll call this app.py. If I can find Python, there we go. So I'll have an app file and I'll also have a template file. So I'll create a new directory called templates and it's going to be an HTML file. So index.html. Okay, so I'll get started with the basic stuff for the app. So from flask, import flask and render template. I'll instantiate the app object. And then I'll create a single route that's going to return this template to me. So return, return render template index.html. So pretty easy stuff so far. Um, and then this is all I need to do. And what I'll do is I'll export the name of this file. So uh, app.py so I can use flask run. And then in index, what I'll do is I'll put a simple variable. So uh, we'll use header tags, um, and I'll call this my var, and I'll pass that to the template. So my var equals hello, Anthony. So I'll send a message to myself. So pretty simple. If I now do flask run, and then go to the URL, I see hello, Anthony. So everything is as we expect it to be because I'm just using Jinja. But now when I introduce Vue, we'll see how problems arise. So what I'll do is I'll get the location of the script and I'll put that inside of my template. So in the body here, and then I'll create another script tag to hold the actual code for Vue. And I'll just use their example because I don't want to get anything too complicated. So their example here, I instantiate the view object here. And I need to put this div somewhere in my template. So I have the header here and I'll put the div that they have from the example. And in their example, they're using message. So we see message here. And the message that you're supposed to see is hello view. So the problem with this is I have the delimiters for my variable in Jinja here, my var, and I also have my delimiters for the message in view. So here's what happens when I try running this. I just see hello Anthony. So the reason why I see hello Anthony and I don't see anything else is because Jinja is interpreting this message here as code that needs to be run through Jinja. And because I'm not passing any kind of message, it's not displaying anything. If I actually displayed a message by passing it, so message equals uh, hello there, and I run it again. So did I use the right name? Uh, message and message, yeah. I need to restart my server. There we go. So I see hello there, and I see hello Anthony. So I can see the message when I pass it through Jinja, but I don't wanna use Jinja for this particular one. I want to use Vue. So like I said, I'm gonna cover the three ways to handle this situation. So for some reason, oh, debug mode is not on. That's why it's not doing it. Okay, so I see hello Anthony, and then I uh, remove the message, so. Let me just turn on debug mode. Okay, so let me run this again. And, oh, I should use flask 
debug equals true flask run okay so debug mode is on now so now when i make a change it will upload automatically or update automatically okay so what i want to do now is i want to make it to where i can use both of these in the same file so like i said there are three ways to do that uh, the first way is the simplest way is by using the raw tags that Jinja gives you so if you use the curly bracket percent and then you pass the keyword raw that's going to tell Jinja to basically ignore everything between the tags. So when I use raw, everything in between the raw and the in raw gets ignored by Jinja, and this persists. So when view comes around, view can actually handle this and it will run it. So I'll change this to be uh, hello Anthony again, so we can see that is actually working. So I see hello Anthony here. So this is from Flask, and then hello Anthony here. That's from View. So if I go back here inside of the view and change it, um, hello view, and then run this again, we see hello view there. And if I change this here to um, hello world, then we see that I can have it here. So I have hello world here and I have hello view there. And that's because I'm using the raw tags and this doesn't get interpreted by Jinja, it gets interpreted by view. Now, if I want to use another method, I can. And this involves changing the delimiters. So I can change the delimiters in either Flask or View, and I'll show you both. So first, I'll start with Flask. To do that, what I want to do is I want to get the existing Jinja options. So the Jinja options are basically uh, the, the configuration for Jinja and Flask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to update it so I use different delimiters. So I'll create a variable called Jinja options. So Jinja options, and then it's going to be app uh, Jinja options. So this is the existing Jinja options and I'll call a copy. What this is going to do is it's going to give me the, a copy of the existing Jinja options. And the reason why I'm doing that is so I can update those options and then pass them back to the app. So now I'll use Jinja options dot updates, which will update the values. And I use the dict keyword uh, because what I'm going to pass in is a list of variables and it's going to basically update the dictionary. Um, and the two that I'm concerned with, there are more, but I'll just cover the ones that are important for this video. I need variable start string and that's going to be equal to some string and then variable in string is going to be equal to some other string. So the variable that I want to use, the, the delimiter, I'll use, let's say, um, open parenthesis, percent, and then percent, close parenthesis for variables. So now that I have that, I just need to update the Jinja options with the new Jinja options. So app.jinja options equals this Jinja options that I just updated. Now when I run this, let's see what happens. I see my var and I see hello view. The reason why I see my var with the brackets is because Jinja is no longer interpreting these as being for a variable. They're just like a regular string now. So I have to use the delimiters that I just created, which is open parenthesis percent and percent closing parenthesis. I wouldn't recommend those particular delimiters, but this is just as an example. So now those are my new delimiters. And when I run the app, I see hello world there because now that gets interpreted as a variable and the value of my var actually gets displayed. So that's how you do it in Flask. You can also do something similar in view if you want. And it's basically you just pass in the delimiters that you want. So what you do here is uh, when you instantiate view, you pass in delimiters. And it's just going to be an array of two things. So delimiters. And it's going to be an array of two strings. So let's say I wanted the delimiter to be something like um, two or hmm, I want something different for opening and closing. So let's do carrots asterisk for open and then uh, asterisk caret for closing. So like I said, this isn't the best example of a delimiter. I'm just showing you how you can actually change them because you can change this to whatever you want, whatever works for you. So now um, I have to do delimiters. So when I run this, 
I see the delimiters, the old ones there, because Vue is no longer interpreting these as being for a variable. So I need to use the new ones. So here I will use caret asterisks and asterisks caret. There we go. Now when I run it, I see the message again, hello view. So as you can see, uh, each method is actually pretty easy. Uh, depending on how your code is structured, uh, one will work better than the other. If you only have one instance of this in your code, then perhaps the raw is the way you wanna go because you won't have to change the delimiters everywhere else. If you have a view heavy app and not so much, um, much Jinja, uh, perhaps you want to change the delimiters for Jinja because you're not using it as much as you're using Vue. And likewise, if you have a lot of Jinja but not a lot of Vue, maybe you want to change the delimiters for Vue because you're not using it as much as you're using uh, Jinja. So it just depends on whatever you're doing, but those are uh, three ways that you can get around it. So I hope this video helped you. Uh, if you have any questions about this, like always, feel free to ask me a question in the comments down below. I'll try to read and respond to every comment. Um, if you are interested in more Python tutorials from me, you can go to my website, prettyprinted.com. I have eight courses up. I'm a mix of free and premium courses, so you can check that out. I also have all the cheat sheets that I have here, and this is going to be updated with whatever cheat sheets that I uh, create in the future. So you can get that on my website, prettyprinted.com. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.